Hello, I am in SharePoint, and I'm going to talk about the integration between SharePoint and Power Apps and how you can use Power Apps within SharePoint or even outside of SharePoint to create custom forms for your SharePoint lists. And so <clears throat> I'm in a list here on a SharePoint site called Gift Ideas, and there's really two ways you can work with here. You can uh, work with the standard SharePoint forms that come with every list. And so if you click on new here, you'll see that. And I think if you're familiar with SharePoint, you'll know these uh, forms. And <clears throat> you can, uh, of course, there's the edit form and view form as well. And so if you know SharePoint, or even if you don't, there's uh, there's some limitations here to what you can do. You can't really uh, hide or display fields. You can't do much with the formatting here. So um, what you see is what you get, and you can't do much. So what you can do, though, is you can work with Power Apps. And really, with Power Apps, you can make that form look however you want it to look. And you can also do some really cool things like uh, hiding fields or showing fields or even going into other lists to display certain data. So really the sky's the limit once you get into Power Apps. Um, the other thing you can do is you can also um, create from Power Apps an app that uses SharePoint data and doesn't necessarily overwrite the forms that you have in your SharePoint list. And this could be something uh, completely outside of the SharePoint environment that just talks to SharePoint and uses it uh, more or less as a data backend. So I'm gonna start here with showing you just how to modify the forms that are in SharePoint. And it's actually gonna be, um, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that you're clicked out of an individual item, and then you'll see this integrate up here. And if you wanna click on that, then Power Apps, if you create this app, it's not going to actually customize the forms on this list. So what I want to show you here is how to customize the actual forms on this SharePoint list. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to pop Power Apps open here. And <clears throat> sometimes this can take a little bit of time as it kind of gets fired up and ready to go. Okay, I'm not sure why it's asking me that, but it did, and so now it's loading up and chugging along, chugga chugga. All right, this seems like a really long time when you're recording a video, but, and I guess in the world of the internet, it is kind of a long time, but, um, <clears throat> This is the first time I'm firing it up, so that's probably the part of the reason why. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip this. So you can see I have my SharePoint form here, and it looks pretty similar to the, the ones that come uh, in you know, your default list. Uh, some things to note here is the SharePoint integration. So this is important, and if I click on that, and, and in Power Apps, uh, anytime you click on something, you're going to get the properties over here. And a lot of times, uh, your advanced is where uh, some of the more important ones are. So in this SharePoint integration here, we have this action. And so this is what tells uh, the form what to open when you're in SharePoint and you click on New or Edit or View. And off the bat here, you only get one SharePoint form but you could certainly um, very easily create a different form for each one of those actions if you wanted to. Uh, so that's pretty important. The other thing I wanna show you real quickly is this form screen. If you click on here and then we go to the properties, uh, actually I'm gonna go up to SharePoint form or down, you can see the fields here. And so this way we can remove fields if we wanted to. So if we wanted to take out the price, let's say, you could remove this. You can also add fields. So any field in your list, you can add here. So that's a good thing to know as you kind of work your way through learning this. Um, so I just want to do something real simple, maybe create kind of a neat little header up here. And so I'm going to pull the form down a little bit, and then I'm going to insert just a text label here. 
and then I'm going to align that up there. And then, so you see I have some properties up here that I can modify. Um, you also, you have all of these kind of same properties here in this, this uh, box here to the right. And so I'm going to increase the font on this a little bit, maybe go to 14, uh, make it bold. I'm also going to add a background color. We'll go with that kind of Microsoft blue. So then we'll change the color of the font to white. <clears throat> and then we will align this to the center. And let's actually change the text as well to... Okay. And so that's looking pretty good. If we click back into that, again, you're going to see the properties on the right-hand side here. So you can see we changed the text, font size, weight. So like most things Microsoft, there's a couple different ways that you can change it. Uh, you kind of use whatever you're most comfortable with there. Uh, just to show you a little bit more, we can um, click into some of these fields here. So like, let's look at title. So you can see we have our title data card and um, you have the value, which is the actual field. You have an error message. If you don't put uh, something in there, that error message is gonna come up at the bottom. And uh, you have the, this is the required star here. <clears throat> the one thing you'll notice here is when you modify these, you don't get the descriptions that you get uh, from your SharePoint list. So let me go, I was in a different site here. So let me go back and load this uh, gift ideas list again so you can see. Whoops. Went into the pages, meant to go into the list there. So you can see here, if I click on new, um, so like under price, I have price of the gift item, uh, event for which gift is being purchased. So you can see some, there's some descriptions with that. And you can see here, you don't get any of that with this, uh, with this Power App customization here. So <clears throat> you can certainly add that. And uh, I can show you how to do that at some other point. But right now, I just want to focus on uh, showing you the different ways in, in which you can interact. And you can kind of work on that other stuff later. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, so you can preview this. Uh, there's not much to this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just go ahead and publish it. And the first thing it's going to do is save it. And then we're going to say publish. And let's look at the versions here. I'm actually going to cancel out of this. Um, so this is, this is it here. I just published this and it is live. So let's go back here. Let's refresh our list here and see if we see it. So we should see our, our new header up on the right hand side. Let's see if that happens for us. Let's click on new again. Try to refresh this again here. There we go. Come on. Okay, so you can see it's loading the Power App. And so you can see our change right here. So that's pretty cool. And if I go, since this is going to be on every... So remember with the edit, we're pointing to the same form. So whether it's edit or not, you're going to see that.
So, all right, that's pretty cool. And so, I feel like once you know how to do that, once you know how to set up the integration, then this other stuff, really you learn it by just getting in there and trying different things. And it's nice because you can also do this preview here, which shows you how it's going to look before you actually save it and publish it. So the other way I wanted to show you to interact with these lists is if you start from Power Apps. And so let's go to Power Apps. And let's say we just came in here and, and we weren't actually in the list. And so what we can do is we can create a new app. So if we go down here to create, um, and you, you get this on the home page here, it gives you a lot of different options and it gives you the SharePoint option here. And so we can go SharePoint here. Again, I get that screen for some reason. I'm gonna choose my SharePoint site here. It's gonna give me some options. I'm gonna go to Power Apps Demos. I'm gonna go Gift Ideas again. I'm gonna connect this. It's loading, takes a second here. Doing lots of stuff you can see down here. That's why it takes a minute. All right, come on now. There we go. All right, so you can see this looks a little bit different than uh, what we were seeing before, and that's because it's a completely, it's an app that is lives completely out of SharePoint in Power Apps, and it's just using that SharePoint list as a data source. So you can see you get a browse screen here, you get a detail screen, and then you get an edit screen. And these are all, so the details screen is if I do the preview, so this is the browse scene, so these are all the items in my list here. And then if I click on here, I get the detail screen, and then if I click edit, I get the edit screen. And then if I close out of that and I go back to the browse screen here and I click on the new, this is actually just the edit screen without any information in there. So you can see here, this is, um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and publish this and we'll call this I'll hit save. And then we can go, if we look at, uh, so the, the best way probably to look at, um, so you're gonna get a URL for this. And so what's the best way to get to that URL? Well, if we go to, um, so the share, so th so that's a, another thing to to look, think about Power Apps too. Is since this app is completely out of SharePoint, it's not actually inheriting the permissions that you have on that SharePoint list. So you need to make sure that people have access to this Power App but also to that SharePoint list. So if you create the app in Power App accessing SharePoint, you have two points there where someone might not have permission. So that's something uh, to definitely think about there. And let's go to, um, so okay, I, I'm in the settings now here and you can see the web link and that's what I was looking for. And I know there's gotta be a better way to get to this, but um, I'm here now. If you look in your apps, uh, you'll see it if you created it. So I, I did one earlier and this is the one I just did. So if I go ahead and click on that, I'm gonna get the URL for this. 
And then this is going to pop up. And so uh, if I create an item here, and I'm just going to go ahead and say, OK, from Power App App, let's go back to our list. And you can see it's been added down here. So that's working. And then you might think, well, what about my forms and my SharePoint lists? Well, they're still there, and they're still using that Power App we created. So really, there are two things that are completely separated. And so there's some cool use cases there, right? Because you could have, like, let's say, an administration team that works in the list and works with the forms in the list, and you create a separate app just for your end users to put in info. And that would be completely separate from the list. And you could even permission those two things separately. So uh, lots of cool use cases there. Um, I hope this helps you kind of get started with uh, you know, modifying SharePoint list forms in SharePoint, but also um, helps you get going with creating actual uh, power apps that access SharePoint. I wanted to make sure to show you uh, a setting here in the list setting when you're working with Power Apps. And I forgot to do that in the last video. So I'm going to, I'm recording this video and I'm going to stick it in uh, to the uh, other video kind of before the end. And the thing I wanted to show you is in the list settings. If you click on the list settings, and there's a form settings uh, here that you can click on. And you're going to see that there's some form options here. And you can use the default SharePoint form. So even after you've created a custom form in Power Apps and published that, if you want to go back to the default SharePoint form, you can do that here. And you can, um, so if I do that and I click that, it's also going to allow me to completely delete those custom forms. And then, But if I don't do that, I can use the default SharePoint form. Then I can come back. And I can reassociate that uh, Power Apps form. So this is important to know if you create a Power Apps form and you make a mistake and, it, and you want to go back to the default SharePoint form, uh, you can do that. So it's a nice way out. And um, I just definitely wanted you to be aware of that. OK, all right, that is it.